So good morning, good afternoon, everybody, depending upon where you are. Uh, we are really excited to be with you today. Uh, today is a long time coming uh, for the Art of Home Ownership team. Um, since we started, our mission was to set out to change the way the consumer saw a mortgage professional and is to completely redefine the expectation that clients have when they choose a mortgage company or a mortgage professional to work with. And, you know, I'm really proud of what we've created up to this point. And I believe that um, not only has it helped my personal business, but it's helped hundreds of other real estate and mortgage professionals across the country uh, with their conversion, with their value proposition, with their you know, referral partnerships. Uh, but it wasn't until recently where, you know, we came up with the The Art of Home Ownership app is finally here and it is launched. Uh, and we believe that it's going to, you know, not only add or further to what the Art of Home Ownership mission is, but it will help the consumer uh, see what a real value of a mortgage professional should be proactively in their life moving forward. So uh, we have a lot to go through today. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, let me see here share screen share screen one then pull this up okay hopefully everybody can <clears throat> see this here so some of you may have heard this analogy from me before um, but back in the early 1900s when people asked henry ford what they you know what he thought his clients would have wanted he said if you were cars existed. Uh, and you, you can see here, you know, cars were created in the early 1900s and 1903 came out in 1907. But it wasn't for almost 30 years where more people drove cars than rode horses, uh, which is just a crazy thing to think about. Uh, because you would think it would be obvious that when the car comes out, get off the horse, get in the car and things are going to be better. Uh, and the analogy I have for this is the mortgage industry. Right? And, and specifically what we're doing here at the Art of Home Ownership, which is that we realize that everyone right now is asking for lower rates and, you know, speed, good customer service, efficiency, you know, you know, fast click button, get mortgage, because that's the only thing they know. It's the only thing our industry has taught them, right, is to shop for the lowest rate and try and get decent customer service because nothing else matters. Well, that's what people thought, again, faster horses, right? They wanted that. So we believe that the art of home ownership can help everybody be the cars of the mortgage industry. And once people know that mortgage professionals offer what we offer as art of home ownership professionals, they won't want to go back to click button, get mortgage anymore, right? They won't want to go back to, you know, just asking for low rates because they realize that what they wanted was a low rate, but what they really need was a valuable mortgage professional to help them set goals they wouldn't set, accomplish you know things in their life that they wouldn't accomplish, achieve financial freedom, and ultimately grow their generational wealth. So <clears throat> I will move on here. This is the new Art of Home Ownership consumer mobile application. Um, my goal and our goal at Art of Home Ownership is that almost every homeowner in the country has this app on their phone at some point. Uh, because we know how valuable it can be for them and we also know how valuable valuable it can be for us as real estate and mortgage professionals so <clears throat> question here how much is your client database worth right are you building a transactional business or are you building a value-based business so i'm going to give you some idea of what your data really is worth right the average homeowner now moves every 10 years it used to be every seven years right but that number as home values have increased and has as interest rates have gone up has moved every 10 years that means that 10% of your database is going to move every single year, right? Another statistic is the average homeowner refinances at least once in their lifetime, right? Meaning 10% of your database will refinance every single year. So how big is your database and how do you predict their decisions? So Art of Homeownership is going to help us do that. And we'll, we'll show you how here.
would be a great time to purchase, by the way. All right, the home's going way up in value. They take some cash out in 2013. And they end up, you know, selling their home, buying another home in 2018 because they've earned more money and their home is, has made a lot of, of, of appreciation. And then they rate and term refinance that in 2020 when rates go down to, you know, two and a half percent. And then, you know, they're not going to touch it for quite a while. Um, they're not going to move for quite a while. They have a super low rate and a home that's appreciating like crazy. Well, so they take a HELOC, right? Because they want to access some of the equity. And then, you know, 2029, they purchase another home, so on and so forth, all the way out to they do a reverse mortgage in 2051. The question is, how good are you at retaining your clients and how proactive are you in their life to where you're not surprised by a single one of these transactions, right? If a client ever calls you and says, hey, I want to take cash out. I want to buy a second or buy my next home. I want to do a rate and term refi. If they ask for any of these, you've already failed. Right? As a real estate professional, if a client says, I want to buy or sell a home and they're your past client, you failed. If a mortgage professional says, I want to do this, that, or the other, you failed. Right? We should be so proactively engaged in our clients' lives that we help educate them as to when they should buy, sell, or finance a home, not the other way around. Right? In Art of Home Ownership, and specifically that the consumer application will help us do that. So <clears throat> I want to talk about frequency of use, right? transaction and interaction frequency spectrum. Um, this is something that blew my mind when I realized how susceptible we are as real estate mortgage professionals to falling outside of the frequency of use spectrum. So you have your daily things that you use, right? Outlook, Teams, Inga, Facebook, et cetera, right? These are things that you use pretty consistently day in and day out. And, you know, it's a very frequently used product. And then you have, you know, weekly, Uber, DoorDash, Zoom, Amazon, et cetera. Some people may even be using Amazon daily. Right. But again, you're not forgetting these, right? They're a part of your normal day-to-day -day operation. Next is monthly, right? You use Uber, you know, monthly, potentially Credit Karma, uh, ISPY, which is a budgeting software, DoorDash, et cetera. And then you get into quarterly, Everlane, Love Every, et cetera. And then yearly, Zillow, TurboTax, Thumbtack, Open Door, Carvana, like, and these these are mainly year, yearly plus, right? So you're probably not using Zillow unless you're trying to buy or sell a home, which is, you know, quite a while, you know, open door, same thing. You're not going to buy or sell a car every year. So when you get outside of the yearly plus, you have a, a problem. The products that have natural frequencies, right? They occur more than once per month or within the habit zone, right? Because it's easier to build a recurring habit with the user. So monthly, daily, weekly, monthly, these are more habitual. You just do them, right? You just you, you know, you wake up, you look, click on something, it just becomes part of who you are. When you fall into the quarterly or yearly, right, now you're in the forgettable zone, right? It's really easy for the user to forget about your product due to the low frequency of use. I am sorry to tell you, but we are square in the forgettable zone, right? And this is kind of a, an image that really breaks it down for you. As a real estate and mortgage professional, we need to try and as much as possible be in the habit zone. And you may be thinking, well, how do we be in the habit zone if we're only used every seven to 10 years, right? We're definitely going to be way over here on the right side of this forgettable zone spectrum. And this is how, right? You stay in the habit zone with your clients because your clients, given the right guidance, given the right information and, and you know, spoken to in the way that they, they engage with your product, they should be utilizing this daily, weekly, or worst case, monthly. Right? And all these things are going to happen through it. Their mortgage review, monthly real estate wealth digest, real estate wealth training, home management system, financing resources for sellers, relocation services, budgeting savings plans, spending reports, banking integration, mortgage readiness, credit health, real estate search. If you're proactive with your financial goals, you'll look at this on a daily basis. Right? If you're even remotely proactive, you'll look at it on a weekly basis. Right? It's very similar to a mint.com or a uh, you know, uh, you need a budget or a wealth front, right? All things that I personally used to use every day. And now I use this product because I really believe that it's more uh, all encompassing. Plus it has a human being connected to it, right? Or an entire team connected to it. So <clears throat> just a quick overview of how your clients need this to become a successful homeowner and why. Right. And this was from an article that I uh, read a few months back. It says, the need for confidence in real estate and personal finances has never been more necessary. Managing debts and liabilities as inflation rises, navigating ever-changing economic conditions, like an impending recession, not knowing where to invest your money, lack of certainty as to where the housing market's headed, 
and the increasing need to build emergency savings accounts are real problems that exist today. I promise you, if you call any one of your clients or just ask any one of your, your friends or family members, like how much are they worried about these things right now? The answer would be quite a bit. And then if you ask them a follow-up question as to what are you doing to solve that worry? Like, how are you working through that? Their answer would be, I'm really not doing anything. I'm just hoping it all works out, which is, you know, hope is not a good strategy. <clears throat> so I'll just skip to this, but poor financial decisions have a negative impact on people's entire lives. And with parents' financial behaviors being mimicked by their children, the problem could last for generations. Like we have the opportunity here, everyone, to impact the society's wealth as a whole. Because most clients, most of our clients and most of society is not going to reach out to financial planners, estate planning attorneys, you know, CPAs. They're just going to go through life in whatever cadence they normally do. But almost all of them at some point will raise their hand and just wonder if they can be approved for a home loan. And this is our opportunity, right? It's our opportunity to be the solution that they need, right? And even if they don't buy a home or refinance their mortgage, they should have access to us helping them in a way that no other person is going to help them. First of all, they're not going to reach out to those people. And secondly, those people wouldn't really give them the time of day because there's not really much there. Right. So our art of home ownership consumer application helps with all of these things, right? And really helps people monitor and track their financial freedom and their net worth over time. Plus you're the person, right? There's no person, there's no team, there's no relationship with mint.com or Wealthfront. There's simply online, do it yourself, no guidance, no advice, right? This marries the best of both of those worlds. It marries the advice and guidance that we need from technology and you know, information streaming into the system and <clears throat> us and our team's ability to help them navigate the changes and evolutions in their life. So <clears throat> just a quick overview of the app and what it does. Right, first, it helps our clients create and manage their budget, which is an incredibly important thing. It helps them track and learn how to increase their credit score, right? daily credit score tracking. Uh, I watched, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, keep track of home projects, paint colors, appliances, and more. Basically a home concierge to keep their home in great shape and increase the home's value over time. Uh, they get to access a mortgage readiness assessment for a clear path to home ownership. One of the coolest parts of the application, which I'll explain. Uh, they can shop for homes right in the app and they can relocate with less stress than ever before. So uh, first thing they'll do in the app is they're gonna connect all their financial accounts. Right. So they'll go in, they'll pick their financial accounts. It'll connect. It'll auto populate all their information, all their banking information. So they'll be able to see their bank balances, their credit card balances, um, all their liabilities. So assets, liabilities and all transactions connected in one place. If you've ever used a mint.com or anything else, you can go in and see, OK, I've spent this much money on this today or that or this week or I'm this, I'm, I'm falling below my budget or I'm above my budget in certain areas. Um, so it really helps people you know, plan not only real time, but long term as well. <clears throat> Next is people can track and improve their credit score. So this is real time credit reporting. Educated decisions that really benefit their overall financial health. There was a, a TikTok video that went kind of viral of this, this young lady who was just in tears because her credit score went down 100 points. She opened a Home Depot credit card for $9 and just kind of forgot about it, didn't pay it, brought her score way down. And she, you know, she said that she, she may not be able to buy her dream home now. I'm not sure how it ended up. But I did a video in response to that, basically saying if she had the Art of Home Ownership app, she would have worked her way towards being a successful homeowner prior to that. She would have had all the information she would have needed. She would have never forgot about a credit card. And she could have, right before she checked out at Home Depot, simulated what opening a new line of credit would have done to her credit score and put in and been like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Real time, right, in her hands. But that's not <clears throat> something that the normal public has access to now, nor is it any, anything that the mortgage industry or real estate industry as a whole is trying to solve for. Another thing is I'm really excited about is that it helps our clients set goals, right? Whether it's improving credit, buying a home, becoming debt-free, they can set goals that they wouldn't set otherwise. Right? People just don't inherently set financial goals, right? Typically what they do is if they're at all unhappy with their finances, they just stick their head in the sand and hope it improves. 
<clears throat> but not here, right? And it'll alert us as what their goals are. It'll alert us as to the progress on each one of their goals, right? So when we're doing our annual fin financial reviews and we're following up with our clients, hey, Joe, I see that you wanted to you know, save for a home. Looks like you're about 58% there. How can we help you get the rest of the way? You know, we're excited. We should probably start getting this process going in about six months from now because it looks like you're almost there. Or by the way, you might think that you're only 58% there, but you actually might be 100% there. Let's do a review. Let's analyze it. <clears throat> Again, don't let your clients surprise you with their thoughts. Um, mortgage readiness is incredible, right? So they can actually go in here and they'll be constantly approved for a mortgage at all times through you, right? So they'll see these check marks and at any point, they'll be able to write an offer on a home. They'll be able to you know, know that they're approved and confidently go shop for a home. Um, and they'll they'll have this in, in perpetuity. They can be you know approved for what they're trying to look for. And then at any point, they can just push this package over to you, right? So they can hit share with lender. They'll push their credit. They'll push their income and they'll push their assets all day one certainty over to your system. You won't need to ask for bank statements, pay stubs. You won't need to pull credit. It'll just move right into your system. And you know, you'll be able to approve them. An underwriter barely even needs to look at it if they need to look at it at all. <clears throat> so, you know, when a client knows they're constantly in a state of mortgage approval because of the technology we put in their hands, it gives them the empowerment to go, you know, look for homes or, you know, be more purposeful with their goals, right? Knowing that they're close to achieving them. So two really great features of the application uh, that I really believe every serious mortgage professional um, should put in the hands of their clients. <clears throat> Next is the budgeting aspect of it, uh, which I absolutely love, right? I mean, they can research or reach their financial goals by creating a realistic budget, set goals, they can track their goals, right? and they can just see where they're at, right? And if they're their mortgage goals or home expense goals, uh, it breaks it down into how they're doing, you know, throughout the month. And then they can go see a more of a detailed budget. So they can <clears throat> they can see, okay, how am I doing on eating out? Oh, I'm over my goal there, or my budget there. How am I doing on entertainment? Oh, I'm actually doing well there. I haven't, you know, I, I still have some room to go. How am I doing on you know, living expenses and, you know, all the things that you would, you would add into your detailed budget. Um, you can just understand on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. <clears throat> Next is our home concierge. Um, most people have no clue how to own a home at a high level, right? So they own it, but they don't know how to keep it up. They don't know when to you know, upgrade it. They don't know how to, who to call for things to be fixed. They don't know how to maintain it. Right? So the only thing they do is they just wait till things break and then they call someone and it's costly and it's timely and it's challenging. Here, we proactively help them keep track of paint colors, appliance receipts, details, uh, you know, reminders about maintenance, appliance recalls. So our clients know that when they go to sell their home, it can be the most valuable home possible because of the work they've done. Plus the buyer will then get to adopt it and see all the receipts and all the money that's gone into it. Um, so we partner with HomeBinder on this platform. It's built right into the app. Right. So the client can do anything they need. They can get alerts right there, basically all in all in palm of their hand. <clears throat> Next is our relocation services. Uh, again, we've built it into the app as well. All right. So if someone's going to move from one home to the next, right, they can change their address. They can forward their mail. They can schedule movers. They can set up utilities, TV, Internet, um, all the things that they need to do to save time, money and energy. And they can also gift this like if your kids are moving or friends are moving. Right? They can say, hey, by the way, I have this awesome app that will save you a ton of time on your move and it checklists everything and it helps you help you with it. Um, you know, I'm happy to share it with you. Just download the Art of Homeownership app and I'll give you the code, which basically is your code as the loan officer. So you can be adopting new clients, you know, without even having to do anything because your clients will share this with other people for a myriad of reasons. <clears throat> Next is our renovation services, right? All of our clients know they're never going to sell a home without reaching out to us first because they want to maximize the return on their investment. Uh, they can renovate their home prior to selling it with no upfront costs. So if 20 grand in renovations prior to selling their home, we'll get them an extra 50. <clears throat> well, then we should do everything we, we in our power to make sure they get that work done. Most people don't have the $20,000, so we would give them the $20,000. And then at closing, they'd refund the $20,000. And then they'd keep the $30,000 that difference, right? So and again, it's right through the app. They can get started. They can connect with us. And again, they, you know, they, they're not going to move without connecting with us because we've, we've set the intention uh, of what could happen otherwise, right? They could, they could really not maximize that return. <clears throat> um, oh, looks like I added that one twice. <clears throat> so 
now that we've gone through a lot of the features of the app, um, and there, there's a lot more than that, but I just want to hit on some of the, the higher points there. Um, we want to track our clients' behaviors with what we call predictive analytics. So what you'll see here is this is the backend version of the app, right? So when you log in to your locker, your app locker, you'll be able to see, and this is just a test version of it, um, you'll be able to see all the clients. Now, if they they have an option when they sign up for the app to take off the anonymous portion of it, so you'd actually see the client's name here, right? We just anonymize these for the purposes of the presentation. But you can see, okay, this, this person, let's call it Joe Smith. This is when they signed up. This is when they accepted. They have 13 financial accounts tied. Their credit is being monitored. They filled out their profile. They put their property in. They have a goal and they have mortgage readiness in place. So as you're doing your, your, your annual review, client follow-up, you know, you want to be, hey, you know, Steve, I see you haven't done this yet. You know, make sure to do this. And here's why. And here's why we need to do this. Or Joe, I see that you've done these things. Amazing job. Let's talk about your goal. Right? Let's talk about what we're focused on. All of these things are going to help you understand how engaged your clients are, how often they're using the platform, you know, how, you know, how often they're logging in, you know, total activities, number of new users in seven days. And this is something you really want to gamify for yourself and especially with other article ownership partners is how many new users can you get in a week? And that's not how many new clients can you get in a week. That's how many new people do you adopt, right? You can adopt a hundred people in a day, right? You can go to a company or an organization or a party and you could put it on social media and have people downloading your app and just adopting new clients all day long. They will inevitably turn into transactions, right? But this is the future of where real estate and mortgage is headed. The past was waiting for someone to decide to buy or sell a home, hoping they got in touch with you somehow, and then hoping you were in their business. The future is adopting them well in advance, giving them all the tools, all the education, all the advice necessary to confidently set a goal and to work with them towards that goal. Right. No longer are we is it a speed to lead thing. It's now a client and data acquisition play to where we're working with those clients on their goals moving forward. Uh, so super excited about this component of it. Uh, you can also you know, run reports and you can filter by when people got in the system, last start date, um, you know, people that are mortgage ready, people that set goals. Right. So you can you know, create your own reports and just focus on people that created goals right? or just focus on people that are mortgage ready, um, you know, people that recently logged in in the last week that you want to chat with because they're, you know, they're looking at it. Uh, so again, predicting their behaviors through understanding what they're doing and then reaching out and connecting with them. <clears throat> and then again, another part of the backend dashboard, you can just see all the people that share their information. Uh, if, the, if it expires coming up, uh, total records, you can even see uh, user by credit band. So how many people have credit scores, 740 or above, you know, 701 to 739. Um, we're also going to be adding in the near future uh, kind of net worth. So you'll be able to see how many clients you have with certain net worths because we want to be able to show our future clients, hey, look, look how many of our clients are in the high credit score range. Look how many of our clients are in the higher net worth range. Now, they didn't all start here, right? Most of them started with maybe a little more challenge credit or with not as great net worth but look where they got to with our guidance over time. That is why you need us as real estate and mortgage professionals, not because we're the cheapest, right? The, the lowest interest rate never created wealth for someone, right? The lowest commission never created financial freedom for anybody. But until now, there's been no alternative, right? The, the alternative between a higher interest rate and a lower interest rate was no difference other than maybe customer service and communication but those things are only important as to the extent that they, you need them, right? So the, the real value here is to be able to show someone how you're going to impact their life financially, proactively, uh, and what that should mean for them long-term. <clears throat> so let's go through kind of the cost here of staying the same. Uh, I think this is really interesting as we, we did, the, we ran the numbers on Art of Home Ownership Partners over the last three years. Um, but these are the following stats that we're experiencing. Our Art of Home Ownership Partners averaged over 40 leads per month. And this is not including adopted clients. Okay, so this is 40 referrals, 40 new clients, 40 people coming to them saying, I want to buy, sell, or finance a home. Right? The number of clients that they, they adopt is going to go through the roof now with this application. Um, and I would expect it to be north of 100 people per month that you would adopt into your database and offer substantive value to and have really good conversations with. 
uh, but they have increased lead conversion by an average of 5%. Now that number doesn't seem super material, but a 5% increase in conversion results in two additional families helped per month, which is approximately $6,000 more per month in income, right? And that's just at a, a lower end range of 5% additional conversion, right? So a lot of people are north of 20% because of that number. Um, and especially in this environment now, when margin compression is a real thing and everyone's competing and people are super rate conscious, I, I just simply don't know if you don't have a value proposition other than rate, speed, service, and you know, experience, then you're there's you just have to be the cheapest. You really do. Because everyone else is saying the same exact thing. But when you can start to show somebody what you're going to do for them over the next 30 plus years and how you're going to improve their credit scoring and their net worth, you know, and all the things that we can show, your conversion, even at 5%, is a meaningful number, right? But should should be quite a bit higher. And then, you know, for acquisition of referral partners, and this is just, this is not just mortgage getting real estate agents. This is, you know, everybody getting, you know, financial planners, CPAs, estate planning attorneys, contractors, uh, you know, real estate agents, mortgage professionals. And our partners are averaging at least one new referral partner per month, which is, if, you, if you're just at a 25% funding conversion rate, which is <clears throat> pretty low, um, you know, the result is you help an additional 10 families per year approximately $30,000 just in year one income alone um, from, you know, just one new referral partner per month, right? So the cost of staying the same is enormous. And a lot of times people think, well, you know, times are tough. I don't want to pay for that. Or I have, you know, too many expenses. If you don't have a wildly differentiating value proposition, then you might as well just quit everything else. I right? just don't even be in the business because you're not going to be able to compete and you're going to struggle and over time you're going to be kind of like a melting ice cube that has to just get out of the business altogether so the investment you need to make right now is how do you become the most valuable person in your client's life when it comes to real estate or finance and then you can see what that investment is yielding just in the lower end of the results that we're seeing <clears throat> so real quick i want to go through the benefits of being an art of home ownership partner uh, and how to you and why this app has a, an inside game proponent to it and then an outside game proponent to it inside is basically how it makes you feel like how you how you show up and the outside is the you know, external factors that it has so i will speak for myself <clears throat> you know since we've created the art of home ownership and since me and the majority of my team you know and, and our company has taken this on um, it's very clear that people are a lot more inspired with what we do um, you know, the people that are coming to join us, the new art of homeownership partners, the partners, you know, the new loan officers that are joining our team, uh, you know, they're coming here because they've lost inspiration, right? When, when you're not winning as much, when the market gets harder, when, you know, you're not seen as all that valuable, you're just seen as somewhat of a commodity, you lose inspiration in it, right? And you lose that drive and that desire that we had, you know, just six months ago. <clears throat> but, you know, I've seen... Not only since becoming an art of homeownership partner, but specifically since this app has come out, the level of inspiration and engagement across the board has been phenomenal. <clears throat> Next is, you know, it helps you and your employees feel safer in a challenging market. Um, you can grow into it, right? You can grow into a tough market. You can convert at a higher level to market. You can, you know, adopt more clients that will then convert into transactions in the market. If you don't have a differentiated value proposition that's not rate, speed, service, and experience, um, you, you can't feel too safe right now, and especially your teammates. Right? So, you know, being able to be inspired when you show up to work, feeling safe at work, and most importantly, go home fulfilled at the end of the day with the work that you've done. Uh, you know, a lot of you know my story, but in 2018, you know, one of the top 25 originators in the country, um, number one in Orange County, Southern California, and I was not. You know, people ask what I did for work and I was like, ah, I'm in the mortgage business. I just was not fulfilled with the work I was doing. I wasn't proud of the fact that I was being praised for selling debt to more people than others. But now every time we help a client, every time our clients are engaging with the art of home ownership and engaging with the app and we're seeing the results in their lives when it comes to their finances and, and we know what that's going to mean for generations to come, it's extremely fulfilling work, right? And then it just loops that cycle again because i'm fulfilled i'm now inspired to go do it more my team feels even safer and so that flywheel moving forward is something that 
if you don't feel these three things, um, I would highly recommend taking a look at the art of home ownership and, and becoming a partner because it's almost an instantaneous shift in what you do. Now, the outside game is how it's going to help you, not just from a, a feeling perspective, but from a tactical and, and logic perspective. Um, it's no doubt you're going to have increased conversion. People want what we do here at Art of Home Ownership. They just don't know it exists. As soon as they know it exists, rate becomes much less of a factor because, you know, if I'm paying a quarter point difference and it's $50 more per month, but someone shows me how they're going to help me create massive generational wealth for 30 years, and I look at all that and think, man, I'm not going to do that on my own. It's absolutely worth every penny for me to go with the more valuable option as opposed to just the cheaper option. <clears throat> Next is database engagement. So if you don't have a really raving fan, high level of engaged database, then this is for you. Um, and I'm not just talking about what you send to them. I'm talking about how they converse with you. Like, are you planning with them? Are you setting goals with them? Do you know what their next financial or real estate step is? Do you know what's happening with their parents and their children? Is there a clear delineation as to what's going to happen next in that client's life? And if the answer is no, again, we've become a commodity at that point. You gave them a mortgage and now they're off and you're just emailing them recipes and, you know, save the date, you know, change your clock emails, right? This is a... a turns your database on fire and it really gets them to engage with you proactively um, as opposed to reactively. Enhanced lead generation, um, you know, think through lead generation as it normally stands, right? You get business from all sorts of you know, eight different pillars of lead gen um, that we that we teach here at Art of Home Ownership. The, the one that people don't think about is how do you adopt clients that have not become a lead yet? Because a lead is only when someone has expressed interest in buying or selling or financing a home. But adopting a client is getting them well in advance of that and then turning those people into you know prospective transactions over time right so not only will you lead generate what a normal lead would be but you'll lead generate for people that aren't even considering themselves as such uh, more consistent and meaningful real estate professional partnerships i will tell you that if you're a mortgage professional on this call your real estate partners need a differentiated value proposition just as badly if not more badly than you um, you know real estate agents are struggling with the same thing we are, right? There's not a lot of inventory, buyers are scared. Uh, when there is scarcity and not a lot of demand, then agents start to do deals for less, right? So margin compression happens in commission and they need to be able to tell their clients why they're gonna be the most valuable person in their life when it comes to real estate or finance. When they can be a part of what you're doing simply by your partnership, um, it becomes really meaningful to them and it becomes consistent, it becomes scalable, uh, and it becomes something that, you know, really but he tell a different story, but a, a story that's combined between the two teammates. Uh, next is alternative business partner acquisition. So, you know, I have a standing bet that if you go show Art of Home Ownership, especially now, I may, I may want to increase the bet. But if you go show Art of Home Ownership to a CPA, a financial planner, a state planning attorney, and you don't almost immediately earn their business or within, you know, one or two meetings, um, I'll pay you $100. Uh, I've had that standing bet for a year and a half, and I've never had to pay it yet. <clears throat> because when those partners see what we're doing and how we're doing it, it becomes immediately clear to them that they're dealing with a higher level mortgage professional or higher level real estate professional. Um, and you know, then you can put them on your your page, right? Your website that we'll create for you. So you have a list of all of your, your trusted professional partners, your clients are referred to them, so on and so forth. You can help your agents with the same thing. Uh, but being able to get a lot more business from these people, but most importantly, is giving them a lot more business because our clients definitely need their services. They just likely wouldn't do that without our, our you know, us pushing them in that direction to say, hey, look, you, you need these people and here's how they can help you. <clears throat> Next is corporate affiliations, right? So imagine going in and, and offering this financial application to an entire company, right? And all these suite of services, the, the monthly real estate wealth digest, the, uh, the home concierge, right? The annual financial reviews, uh, the perfect mortgage promise, like all the things plus the the tangible app that they can have in their hands. Now, you know, we became the my my team became the preferred lender for Facebook and all forty thousand of their employees, um, and we did that in twenty nineteen, uh, and that was way before we had this app, right? Now, being able to go to companies and saying, "Hey, look, like." I know you don't need a preferred lender or preferred realtor, but what your what your employees need is help and guidance with everything they're doing real estate or finance related. 
and we have an entire pitch deck within the Art of Home Ownership ecosystem uh, that helps you go, you know, pitch to HR or, or management or any, you know, corporation or entity uh, to help you get in there. And a lot of our Art of Home Ownership partners, you know, are they partner with uh, major league sports teams, they partner with, you know, counties and, uh, you know, local organizations. So uh, it's been really cool to see how people have, have utilized that. Uh, next is direct consumer capabilities. So, you know, typically you think of direct consumer as, you know, somebody, you know, buying leads, uh, you know, putting content out, um, you know, basically going direct to the consumer in some form or another. Um, being able to do that with this, basically where you're offering them something without selling them anything, and they don't need to be interested in buying or selling a home to engage and to download it and to sign up. It's the best direct to consumer product that exists in the market because everything else required, at least in our business, everything else requires that they want to buy, sell, or finance a home for them to engage, right? Now we have the opportunity to go direct to consumer and adopt them at a high level um, without having to sell anything, which is awesome. Uh, new market penetration, um, you sh can and should work in multiple markets across the country. Uh, no longer are you going to be you know, held just to your you know, places you can drive because ideally, you know, you'll have clients all over the country and partners all over the country that are using your app, right? And they're relocating from one place to the next. Uh, and then the last two are succession planning and systematized business model. These take a little bit longer to get into, but just a quick version of it. If you think you only have about five years left in this business and you don't want for, for the last 20 years to just evaporate into the ether, um, this is the number one succession planning tool that I believe that exists today. Uh, because there's no better way to succession plan your business to somebody else and earn revenue for the next 10, 20, 30 years than to have this type of captive audience <clears throat> that is all engaged in a database uh, that can easily be converted over into whoever that successor is. So um, if you guys are interested in that, let us know. We'll let you know more about it. And then <clears throat> lastly is we really we want to guarantee the differentiation. Uh, so when we started the Art of Home Ownership, we realized, look, just candidly, there's not going to be a lot of people in the country that, you know, as mortgage or real estate professionals that even want to do this, right? There's only going to be a handful of us that are really committed to proactively improving the lives of our clients after the transaction. Most of us just want to sell debt and sell homes and move on. I mean, that's okay, right? Because that's how our industries have been for the last 180 years. Um, but for the people who really want to be differentiated, we wanted to make it special and we want to put a spotlight on them. Right, so we've limited the Art of Home Ownership Partnerships to only one loan officer for every 100,000 people in a metropolitan statistical area. Uh, meaning that if there's a million people in your MSA, there's only going to be 10 loan officers or 10 mortgage professionals that are invited onto the platform that can use it. After that, we cut off that market, market service area. And then each loan officer can invite up to 10 uh, real estate agents onto the platform. Right, So there'd be 10 mortgage professionals and there'd be a hundred real estate professionals in a million person market. Uh, meaning that you're just not going to get a lot of people out there that are offering what we're offering with this platform, with the app, with the ability to, to be differentiated. So um, we're excited about that because we know that, you know, there's going to be markets that sell out and those people are going to do incredible things in those markets. And we want to spotlight those people for, you know, taking that step and really making that commitment, not only to themselves, but to the consumer. So I'm going to leave you with this last story here, um, which is, and some of you may have heard this as well, but um, basically Virgin Cola versus Coca-Cola, which really is this, the story of the future of the mortgage industry. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Richard Branson, Virgin Airlines, you know, Virgin Records, Virgin Enterprises, <clears throat> he started a cola company, did some blind taste tests that, you know, his son uh, had a guy to school do some blind taste tests and he kept winning. They kept beating Coke and Pepsi every single time. So he said, all right, like, you know, he kept testing it and testing it and testing it. And it just kept winning. He said, all right, well, if we have a better product, then, you know, let's start a cola company. <clears throat> and it took off. It did really well in the UK, um, performed really well, made a lot of money. And then he wanted to launch it in the United States, which obviously, you know, Coke has a stronghold. And this is back in the 90s. And to, you know, in true Richard Branson fashion, he, he stacked a bunch of Coke and Pepsi cans in the middle of Times Square, and he drove a tank over all of them, you know, a Virgin Cola tank, basically arriving, you know, announcing his arrival in the United States. And <clears throat> Virgin Cola started taking market share. And then Coke finally saw that it was a 
viable contender and realize that, oh, wait a minute, like this could be a problem for us. And because they have all the money and distribution in the world, they just choked virgin coal out for lack of a better term. So they bought all the distribution, they bought all the store shelves, they went to all the, you know, the, the carriers and said, look, we're going to give you more money, put only Coke in. And they just over, they just outspent what Virgin Cola could spend. And so when people showed up to go get Virgin Cola at the store, they looked around, they didn't see it. And they just, they, they saw nothing but Coke and they just go, oh, well, it's close enough. Right. And they grabbed the Coke. The, the reason I'm sharing the story is because if they would have showed up to the store and not seen it and then went to the manager and said, hey, where's the Virgin Cola? It's way better than Coke. And if you don't have it here, I'm going to go somewhere else to get it. Well, then the store owners would have been forced to put the Virgin Cola in because they would have been losing money. But that didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen was because Virgin Cola was only marginally better than Coca-Cola. Only marginally to the point to where if it was there, someone will get it. But if not, no big deal. They're going to take the Coca-Cola. And the reason this parallels with the mortgage industry is because of this, right? Like the rocket mortgages, the better.coms, the publicly traded company, the companies that have more money than one of us individual loan officers or any small mortgage company combined. <clears throat> the reason they're dangerous is because first of all, as an industry, we've only said rate and cost over and over and over again. Right. So people are automatically thinking that's the case. But those companies can look at a company like yours, like mine, like anybody's, like any small mortgage broker and just say, you know what, we're just going to buy that market. Right. We're just going to we're just going to price them out like they can't compete with us. And over time, they'll go away. That's only true if the client doesn't demand what we do. Right. If they show up and, you know, these other mortgage companies are not delivering the value that we're delivering, then and, and they they know that they want and need that, then they're going to demand that. Meaning that we will always have our share of the market. And we're not fighting over the low cost, you know, be on every Super Bowl ad, commercial, click button game. We're not fighting over that audience. What we want to do is over time, we want to show the average consumer that what they really need is what we're offering as an art of home ownership partner, right? We're offering services and value and proactive guidance and financial counseling that they're not going to get anywhere else. And that is going to create a level of wealth and, and differentiation in their life that they would not get anywhere else. If we don't do that, people will just look at rocket and look at us and say, eh, rockets close enough and go that direction. So moral of the story, Let's not be the version cola of the mortgage industry. Let's be the art of home ownership to all the people that we know need it to, you know, the average blue collar, white collar family out there that is struggling to get by the 99% of people who are not going to get advice and guidance because look, wealthy people aren't wealthy because they have money. They're wealthy because they have information, right? And information is what people need. It's what they don't have access to, but it's exactly what we're going to put in the palm of their hand with the art of home ownership mobile app. So let me stop sharing here and we'll escape out of this, move back into our StreamYard session and uh, Val team, I don't know if we're taking Q&A or if there's anybody wants to chime in or ask any questions here. All right. Well, team, everyone, thank you for being a part of our uh, session today. Hopefully this was helpful. If you, you know, have questions about our home ownership, how to access it, how to learn more about it, um, please feel free to, you know, <clears throat> click in the, the information below. Uh, just go to artofhomeownership.com. Uh, they can, you know, help you understand more about what we're trying to do here. Uh, and we really believe that we can create a movement in the mortgage industry where what we do becomes the most important part of our clients' lives in real estate and finance. And we are excited to help you be a part of that. So thanks for your time, everyone. See you soon.